Dear viewers, in this video I will show you how to set up and use a Garmin Tactics 7 uh, to calculate ballistic solutions and uh, shooting at long range. Uh, the video is going to be in two parts. First, uh, first half, if you will, is about setting up the watch, basically uh, in the, for one time kind of deal. And secondly, we're going to go to the shooting range and I'm going to show you how to actually use it when you uh, want to have a solution for any particular shot. So a couple of assumptions. Uh, I will be using a uh, projectile that is included in the custom drag models library of applied ballistics. And that's really, I guess, includes most relevant projectiles for shooting long range. It's a really, really powerful tool because instead of estimating uh, what the projectile does relative to some theoretical projectile, uh, Brian Litz and the uh, applied ballistic guys actually uh, measured uh, specific bullets to see how they, uh, uh, how they perform during flight. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good idea to use this, uh, these uh, projectiles for which we have custom drag models. This particular one is a Hornady ELDX 142 grains, 6.5 millimeter. Secondly, you need to know a couple of things about your rifle. I'll use this one to illustrate what that is. First one is you need to know your sight height. So your sight height is the distance between the center of the barrel and the center of the scope, ideally around the turrets. So you need to figure out what's the distance between mid barrel and middle of scope. On this particular rifle it's uh, 60 millimeters or 6 centimeters. The other one you should be able to look up and that's the twist rate of your barrel. So what that is, it's the distance uh, the bullet will need to travel through the barrel to make exactly one revolution. As it goes through. So for this rifle it is 8 inches so that's the number we need to, uh, to know. So we need to figure out what that is for your particular rifle. So secondly I'm gonna put this over here. <coughs> secondly <coughs> we need to talk about muscle velocity and that's of course extremely important for uh, uh, predicting uh, the, the bullet flight so you will need to know what your muscle velocity is. So one thing you will need to get a hold of, at least uh, for setting up once, is a chronograph. It could be a lab radar, it could be any other chronograph. So you'll need one of those, or borrow one, or uh, maybe find one on the range. And then secondly, you will need to be able to measure the temperature of your ammunition. What I use is an infrared uh, thermometer, like this one. And so the exercise becomes figuring out what is your muscle velocity uh, as a function of your ammunition uh, temperature. The fact is that the warmer the gunpowder gets, the faster it burns and the higher your muscle velocity is going to be. So we need to know that in order to be able to make a good solution. So uh, what I did, and uh, this is a pretty simple process, is I took batches of three rounds of ammunition the day before I put three in the fridge, uh, three in the freezer, uh, three outside, three in the living room and I uh, put three in a uh, coffee mug with hot water around 40 degrees. So what you end up is uh, ammunition at different temperatures. So then you go to the, to the range and you set up your rifle, you set up your chronograph and then you want to make sure that you measure the uh, temperature of your ammunition immediately prior to shooting it and you want to chamber the round and fire it immediately. You don't have to aim anything, that's not the point of this exercise. The reason you need to be a little bit swift about that is that as soon as you chamber the round, especially if it's cold, the temperature is going to rise and it's going to be inaccurate. So you want to you wanna make sure that you uh, fire the round as soon as you have chambered it. So at the end of that exercise, you can imagine that you have sort of a table of temperatures and muscle velocities. One way of representing that is you can plot it on a diagram. 
so on the x-axis you're gonna have uh, the, uh, the temperature of the ammunition and on the y-axis you're gonna have your muscle velocity and this is this is a handy thing so when it comes to uh, the watch it only knows about one temperature uh, which by the way I decided to uh, connect to an external thermometer so it's not the temperature of the watch I'm using because that's typically on my wrist and that's not that's not surrounding temperature it's typically hotter so anyways it knows about one temperature but temperature really comes into play in, in like two different places one has to do with external ballistics meaning that once the projectile has left the the bell uh, you need to know the temperature of the surrounding air to be able to uh, project where the uh, projectile is going to go. Secondly, as we just discussed with muscle velocity, it's going to have an impact. Uh, temperature is going to have an impact on muscle velocity. So the thing is, it's kind of interesting. The first shot you make, which in some cases is really interesting to hit with the first shot. For example, when hunting, you can't wait around and adjust your scope and have you know several shots before you can actually hit. So you need to make the first shot count. Um, so in, in that situation, this thing becomes really handy uh, because you know the temperature and you're gonna estimate what your, uh, what your muscle velocity is and you're gonna be fine. So there's a feature in the watch called MV table, so muscle velocity table. And what that does is it's gonna enable you or allow you to key in basically the table I just described and it's gonna estimate your muscle velocity based on the temperature that it knows about. But the challenge is that if after the first round your rifle typically heats up a little bit and so then all of a sudden and the, and the watch really only knows about one temperature. So the problem is that the temperature it knows about is good for the external ballistics but it's going to be off for the muscle velocity. So as smart as this feature sounds, uh, it's actually good if you're only shooting one shot. But if you're shooting more than one shot, uh, it becomes a little bit uh, counterproductive. So what I suggest is you're not using MV table. You're going to uh, actually enter the uh, expected muscle velocity. And uh, when doing that, you can kind of go two directions. Uh, the premium one, of course, is to set up your chronograph next to your shooting position so you will be able to follow your muscle velocity as you shoot, which typically follows the pattern of, of the more you shoot, the higher your muscle velocity is going to be, and then you can change it, uh, key in a new uh, muscle velocity in the watch, and it's going to provide an accurate uh, solution again. The other way of doing it, which is faster, a bit more practical, but not as accurate, is to continue to use this uh, diagram I just described. So what that means is you're going to estimate what is the temperature of your ammunition when you when you fire the round. And that can be a little bit tricky, especially if your barrel or your chamber is hot, because, I mean, how long time does it stay in there before you, while you're aiming, and what is actually the temperature as you shoot. But anyways, you can sort of guesstimate that and you can key in a muscle velocity and, uh, and that's the other way of doing it. Okay, with all of that out of the way, uh, let's get to setting up the watch. Okay, so here we are on the watch and now we are going to set it up for the, uh, for the rifle. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit enter to get into the different activities and then hit enter again to go into applied ballistics. If you enter, you're going to go into the menu and you're going to scroll down and select profile. So for this demonstration, I'm going to create a new profile. So I'm going to enter again and add a new profile. What you can do is if you uh, hit enter on this profile, you can uh, give it a new name, which we don't need for this purpose, but uh, you are probably going to name it something meaningful. Okay, so um, now that we're on this new profile, there are a couple of things we need to set up. First one has to do with the bullet. So I'm 
entering on bullet and uh, in this case I'm going to use the bullet database as I talked about previously. I, because the projectile I'm using is included in the custom drag model library, I'm just gonna just gonna find it in here. So I hit enter on the bullet database and I'm gonna select uh, AB or Applied Ballistics Elite. So first thing you need to do is select your caliber and I'm shooting 6.5 millimeter, which is equivalent of 0.264 inches. So I'm gonna scroll down to 264 and then I'm gonna uh, select the, the brand of the bullet, the manufacturer. That's a Hornady bullet. And then I'm simply just gonna scroll down until I find my bullets. And here we got it, ELDX 143 range. So it was and then I'm of course going to hit enter and then I'm given the option of selecting a drag model. So G1 is the, I guess, oldest, uh, not very good representation of a modern projectile. G7 is the more modern one and then the gold standard here in my opinion is the custom, which is the custom drag model. So this is, now we all of a sudden we're using basically Doppler radar measurements taken from this particular projectile to help uh, estimate the, uh, the, the, the the shot solution. So long story short, I'm just going to hit enter and we're done. That's really all we need to do as it relates to the bullet. So we can go back and we are going to go into gun properties. There's a few things we need to set up. The first one, muzzle velocity. Uh, as, as, as mentioned before, we are going to key in our estimated veloc muzzle velocity uh, while on the range. So we'll just leave it uh, for now. Zero range is the, uh, the, the range for which you have zeroed in your rifle. And 100 meters, that's fine for me because that's why I zero in my rifle. And then we've got this, the sight height. Uh, that's, I measured that to be 60 millimeters, so I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm simply just going to uh, scroll up until I get to, to 6 centimeters, which should be uh, around here. Oh, so it picks up speed a little bit on the hole in the bottom. So six centimeters is my sight height. So this is kind of a one-time operation, right? This only needs to be set up once. And then the zero height, you can leave empty and the zero offset, you can leave it uh, all at zero. Same for SSF elevation and vintage. And then we got the twist rate. So keep in mind, my twist rate is eight inches. So, uh, but I'm going to enter it in centimeters, so you need to do the math and you will figure out that 8 inches is the equivalent of 20.32 centimeters. So I'm going to scroll down until I get to 20.32. And again, this is sort of a one-time operation, right? So this is a, a number that doesn't change for, that, for, the, for this particular rifle. So we're getting there. So 20.32 and that's it. And then you can leave calibrate muscle velocity. Uh, you don't have to do that or drop scale factor you can leave. And this is what I kind of the feature I discussed previously and that I would suggest that you uh, do not use uh, for the reasons uh, mentioned before, uh, the kind of the issue with, uh, with different temperatures. So. Now we are good to go on the range, so let's get there. Okay, so now we're at the range and uh, I brought this guy with me. So uh, I estimate my muscle velocity to be uh, 797 meters per second. Uh, and then we need to key in some uh, something about the environment. The watch will pick up automatically uh, the pressure, the air pressure. But I need to measure the wind and the direction of the wind. So. I estimate we got four meters per second of wind at three o'clock. So three o'clock really means relative to the shooter. So you'll see that as, as a key in. And then I know the target to be 560 meters away and we're going to use the compass uh, to get the, uh, the bearing to the target. So let's get on the watch. Now we're on the uh, applied ballistics page on the watch and I hit enter. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the estimated uh, muscle velocity. So I enter profile and I go down to gun properties and you can see here I already entered the muscle velocity of 997 meters per second. So this, then I go back 
And on this page, I hit enter again, and I go up to quick edit, which allows me to enter some data about the target. Um, and it was 560 meters. Yeah, 560 meters, and the direction of fire, so that's the bearing to the target, is 170 degrees. I used a compass to find that. And then the wind, I estimate to be 4 meters per second. Uh, and I'm only going to use uh, wind number one here. And so I go down to the wind direction, and I estimate that to be 3 o'clock. So 3 o'clock really means relative to the shooter. Right, so it, which means it comes from from my right side, and then on the uh, on the top portion of the display, you can see my my shot solution. So that's 4.24 millirads up, and it's 0.99 uh, millirads to the right. Okay, so now we're on the rifle. So I'm gonna dial in 42 elevation like this, and then gonna dial in 10 in windage. And then this, uh, yes, and then so that's the solution dialed in the scope, and I'm gonna yeah. change yeah. the parallax, and we're good to shoot. Spot already. Where are you the the, uh, Send it. Hits. Yeah. 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 Yeah